uh, he wrote to this counterpart Timothy and he revealed uh, to him all of the different challenges that the church would bring and how he had to establish government in the church. You know, there's a lot of people that don't like government. They don't like to be told what to do. But if you serve God, you serve a God of government. And so Paul, he tells this young counterpart that there's going to be some problem teachers and how to deal with leaders and how to honor old people and how to make sure widows know their place, how to have the right mindset about money. I don't have time to go into all of it. But he writes very correctly to his young counterpart because he knows that he's leaving the church at Ephesus there in his hand. But if you continue to read in the second Timothy, it is tremendously different than first Timothy because now he's writing under a different circumstance. He is now in prison and uh, Nero wants his head. It has been said that Nero has burned Rome and he's blaming the Christians. And so Paul now is writing under a different set of circumstances. In a day now, he might be dead. And so he writes with a sense of urgency. Am I right about it? So when he writes to him, he gives him some specifics to help make him what he's called to be. So what he includes not only is some instructions to Timothy, but it is also his last will and testament. Am I right about it? So he urges this young man, he urges him to have no other doctrine. Let me quickly move with my message. He also encouraged this young man that he should always pray. Everywhere lifting up holy hands. He gives him the qualifications of an overseer. And he begins to give them specifically the qualifications. I won't go through all of them, but he says that a bishop cannot be a partaker of any wine. But then he gets over to the deacons and says the deacons not much wine. And you know, uh, as a bishop, if I could change something in the Bible, because if anybody ever now and then, <laughs> let me go. Let, let me keep on going. Talks to him about the qualifications of deacons. And he deals with him about the time that comes when men are going to go after false doctrines. Am I right about it? As he writes to Timothy, he tells him that perilous times are going to come. How many of you know we're living in perilous times? He says that for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and ungodly, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And as he continues to write, he comes to the conclusion of his letter. As he begins to tell him also in the text, something that I think is important that I bring to your attention, where he tells him to study to show thyself approved. A workman of God need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We have taught over the years that that word study here is the same definition that we use in the English definition, where it is to take information and rehearse it to memory so you can recall it at any given time without reference because you have studied it to your memory. But this here does not have anything to do with the English definition because this word study here is, is pudezo, and that word means to use speed. It means to make effort. It means to be prompt or earnest. The word is associated with diligence, forward endeavor, and labor. So what he's saying is God approves people who use speed and put forth an effort. Those are the kind of workmen that God looks for earnest folk. People that are endeavored to get through to the end. Look at your name and say, neighbor, it ain't over yet. God is not finished with me. Can I get a witness in here tonight? God 
is not finished with me. There's still some work I have to do. There's still some goals I have to accomplish. There's some things I have to bring to pass. And so I want to encourage you tonight that you're going to get there. I said you're going to get there because